Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be looking at the 26 very finest GBA games that have ever been released. Why 26? Well, 21 just doesn't cut it these days, does it? We're going to be looking at these in no particular order, except for the last five, which are going to be a top five. So there's no squabbling in the comments. Or at least less. Also, we're going to use the traditional rule of one game per main series. For example, you can have Super Mario Bros. and Mario Tennis, but you can't have Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. 2 because they're sort of chronological. But anyway, enough waffling, let's have a look at those first 21, shall we? If you've not played a Wario Land game and you're expecting it to play like a Mario game, then uh, guess again. You'll not only be running and jumping, but also charging and throwing things all over the place. The Wario Land series is criminally underrated and seems to get forgotten by a lot of people except the really hardcore fans. It's a seriously good platformer. <laughs> Drill Dose is one of those rare instances of a game made by Game Freak that isn't Pokemon. It puts you in charge of a young girl in a giant mech suit with a giant drill. In other words, it's Japanese. It's a sort of Metroidvania game, kind of. I mean, it's really difficult to put this one in a box because the gameplay really is so different. That's not to say it's difficult to pick up though, and if you haven't had a go, then I suggest you do. <laughs> Mario's got his mini-games in Mario Party, and Wario has his micro-games in WarioWare Inc. I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain what a WarioWare game is, but I will do anyway. Basically, you just have to play these absolutely minute, teeny tiny little games that require very little explanation beyond just a line of text. You'll have to do these in enormously quick succession, and if you fail too many times, you fail. Honestly, what you're seeing on the screen right now is the best way to show you it. It really is absolutely mental and incredible fun, especially multiplayer, which admittedly is hard to do on the GBA these days. If there's one complaint I have about the original Gunstar Heroes, it's that it wasn't super enough. Thankfully, on the title alone, Gunstar Super Heroes solves that. It contains all the ridiculous run and gun fun that you'd come to expect for the series, and it takes things up a notch with a genuinely interesting story. It's crazy, it's high octane, it's a must have. The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past and Four Swords. This kind of seems like two games, but it comes on one cartridge, so we're treating it as one. The original Link to the Past was an absolute masterpiece, but there were a few little issues here and there that have been completely rectified in the GBA re-release. It features new graphics, new gameplay, and just refines the whole experience to make it a little bit more accessible. But don't worry, it's still the same game under the hood, so if you love the original, this version is definitely worth a look. Okay. <laughs> That's right, we're including a golf game, because golf games are fun. Mario Golf Advance Tour is not only a great Mario Golf game, but it also features a single player story, which is not something that can be said for most golf games. If you enjoy golf games, you're definitely going to enjoy this one, and also if you just like a sort of a light-hearted RPG with maybe some golf elements as well, you could enjoy this as well. It's really good. Play it. Oh, 
already there's a lot of Mario on this list. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Yes, if you've played any of the Mario and Luigi games, you'll no doubt have heard people say, well, it's not as good as the original. Well, guess what? This one is. So it has to be. It's sort of a spiritual successor to Mario RPG on the SNES, and it is just downright lovely. Great gameplay, great animation, and the humour on it is just absolutely on point. You'll never be able to look at Mario the same way again. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. I played this to death back in the day, and coming back to it, I was a little bit worried that maybe rose-tinted view and everything, I was gonna think it was better than it was, but I was wrong. It's brilliant. It's an isometric tactical RPG, but it introduces some very interesting elements that we haven't really seen in other series. Most notably is the judge character and the laws. Every single battle will have one or more laws that must be adhered to, such as no using items or no using potions, and you have to adhere to them, or you could be sent to prison, which is no fun. If you like your tactical games, well, you've probably already played this, but just in case you haven't, play it anyway. Yes, it's another Camelot game, but this time it's tennis. Imagine Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, but actually with some decent single-player content. It's hard, I know. It's amazing just how smooth and reliable the gameplay is in this game, considering it's all using 2D sprites. Just as with Mario Golf, this is an extremely solid tennis game, with a wonderful single-player campaign to enjoy as well. <laughs> We're not yet done with those Mario games because we've also got Mario vs. Donkey Kong. This is a puzzle platformer that's essentially a sequel to the original Donkey Kong game, well, not the original, to the Donkey Kong game released on Game Boy back in 19 dickety dickety. And it's really good fun. You actually control Mario in this one rather than all the annoying little toys, and my god, is it better for it. The mechanics start off simple and then rapidly get more and more complicated as time goes on, which you'd pretty much expect for a video game. Great fun, genuinely challenging. Challenging, it's overall just a lovely game. Yeah. Street Fighter Alpha 3 Turbo Extra Super Ultra Extra Plus Edition. Too. Yes, it's very easy to make jokes about Street Fighter, but these games are fantastic. Some even consider Street Fighter Alpha to be better than Street Fighter 2, but I'll uh, let you decide that in the comments. It's a really solid Street Fighter game. I don't think I really need to say any more than that. Yes, the sprites are downscaled and there aren't all of the levels that you'd get in the original Street Fighter Alpha, but even so, for a portable system, this is amazing. <laughs> If you think your mirror's amazing, just wait till you see Kirby's. If you've played a Kirby game, you can play Kirby in the Amazing Mirror. It doesn't bring anything extraordinarily new to the genre, but it still tries out a few interesting ideas, and it comes out on top. It's a Kirby game. It's a good one. Do I really need to say anything else? Mario Kart Super Circuit might as well just be a direct sequel to the original Super Mario Kart because it seems to handle in exactly the same manner. Basically what I'm trying to say is I can't play it. But even so, this is still easily the very best racing game on the GBA. And what's more, it has the challenge mode that has been painfully absent from every single Mario Kart game since. There was nearly one in Wii, but apparently Nintendo just doesn't love us.
Tactics Ogre, the Knight of Lodis. Or Lodis. If you're thinking to yourself, hang on, this looks an awful lot like Final Fantasy Tactics. Well, yeah, it does. But this is in fact created by an entirely different developer. It just so happens that the limitations of the GBA means that this is what anime style looks like. If Final Fantasy is a little bit too happy-go-lucky for you, then Tactics Ogre is the way to go. It's a much more mature style of tactical RPG. For one thing, there are no Moogles. It seems to have flown under the radar a little bit, which is a real shame, but I absolutely have to recommend you play this immediately. Final Fantasy VI, also known as Final Fantasy VI or Final Fantasy III. This is the advanced version of the game, and much like all the other ports on this list, it is absolutely superb. Otherwise, it wouldn't be here. I don't really know what to say, to be honest. It's one of the finest Final Fantasy games ever, and it's one of the finest ports of it ever. Basically, it's just a fantastic game. It's Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> Yes, it's Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, not Ruby and Sapphire. I know, I know, surely Ruby and Sapphire should be the superior games, but no, I have to say that Fire Red and Leaf Green just do everything that makes Pokemon Pokemon so perfectly. It's the original two games, but just looks so much better and plays so much better. How can you not be excited for that? A lot of the original issues have been completely stripped out, and it is so funky fresh that it still stands up today. I genuinely don't think I'm mad when I say that this is probably the best Pokemon game full stop. Yes, another tactical game. We do love them. Fire Emblem, as it's known in the West, just so happens to be the, is it the sixth or the seventh entry in the series? Basically, it's not the first one but it is the first one we got over here. And the years have been kind. If you've played any modern Fire Emblem game, you already know the basics of this one. If you've never played it before, then definitely give it a go, as it'll give you a lot of the groundwork that really you don't necessarily need for the later games, but even so, it definitely helps. I'm talking about the story. Mega Man Zero. Yes, it's a Mega Man game, but again, it's been refined much like Mega Man X had been, and my goodness, is it good. There are a lot of text boxes, it has to be said, but even so, once you get past those, you've got an incredible game down here. As the title suggests, you're not playing as Mega Man or Rock Man, but instead you're playing as Zero who's a different robot. It does feel very much like Mega Man X, but if you've played Mega Man X, then you know that that is no bad thing at all. Yes, this is a bit of an oddball choice, I'm well aware. I personally had never heard of Ninja 5 also known as Ninja Cop, also known as Worms Ninja Rope the Game, but my colleagues absolutely assured me that it was a classic, and after having played it for even just a little bit, it's great fun. It kind of feels like an evolution of the Shinobi series, but without being absolutely brutally balls difficult. I really like it, and if you like ninja games, you can't go wrong with this one.
Sonic Advance 3. Why Sonic Advance 3? Because it, we, th it, we think it's marginally better than the other two. Is it the best Sonic game ever? No. Is it one of the best Sonic games ever? Yes, but the competition isn't exactly fierce. Back in the day, the Sonic Advance series was a breath of fresh air, showing that Sonic really is best suited to two dimensions. Sorry, Sonic Forces. And the developers clearly knew this, and they understood what made a good Sonic level a good Sonic level. Also, you collect Chow, which is absolutely adorable, and they basically function like red rings, only they got a personality and they go, Chow. Whatever happened to the Chow? The Chow were great. Why don't we just have a Chow Garden game? Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Sonic Advance 3, it's good. Play it. <laughs> Castlevania seems to be one of those series where you either love it or you haven't played it. Of all the Castlevania games on the GBA, this just tops the list. It's deep, it's engaging, it still looks great today, and if you've played a Castlevania game before but you haven't played this one, you're missing out. Oh, well, that's the first 21, but what about this top five that I've been bleating on about? Well, it's these. Golden Sun is one of those series that seems to have slipped a lot of people by, and it's a massive shame. The original is arguably the very best, and despite its sort of childlike look, it is one of the most original, refined, and just downright mature JRPGs out there. And if you think that art style is recognizable, you'd be right, because yes, this is another great game from Camelot. Fans know it through and through, but if you haven't given it a go, then definitely do so immediately. Yes, amongst all the other tactical games we've got on this list, we simply cannot ignore Advance Wars. It's another game by Intelligent Systems who are responsible for the Fire Emblem series as well, which is why there's a lot of parallels. However, if you think it's just a Fire Emblem game with a military theme, think again. This is essentially a continuation of the old Famicom Wars, and it feels right at home on the GBA. The gameplay is just as fresh as it was when it first came out, and the first one is pretty much the best. But if you can't get the original for some reason, then any of the sequels is also a worthwhile investment. Super Mario Advance for Super Mario Bros. 3. That's not going to get annoying to say at all. Of all the Super Mario Advance games, this one has to top our list, simply because it is probably the best version of Super Mario Bros. 3 out there. Whilst I think I personally prefer Super Mario World, I have to admit that the Super Mario Advance version of Super Mario World just doesn't cut the mustard like this one does. And if you dust off your Wii U and download it on there, you get access to all of the e-reader levels as standard. Don't know what the e-reader levels are? Well, you're not alone. These were essentially DLC, and it expanded the number of levels enormously. Also, how can you say no to those lovely SNES-style graphics? Answer, you can't. Ah 
I know we're bending the rules a little bit here, but it's not the first and it certainly won't be the last time. But it's our list, so get stuffed. The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap isn't actually developed by Nintendo, but much like Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, it's developed by Capcom. And what a job they did. This is a phenomenal Zelda game with some really interesting ideas that really help to bring something new to the table. You get to shrink down in size and explore the world from a new perspective, and you also get to use the Kinstones, which are a thing. Whilst A Link to the Past and Four Swords was a revelation for the old game, this game proved that new ideas can work and they can work wonders. I told you it wouldn't be the last time we're bending the rules. Yes, we're including Metroid Fusion and Metroid Zero Mission at the number one spot, simply because we just couldn't pick between them. Neither one of these games has aged a day. They play just as well today as they did so many years ago. And honestly, if the pixel art style was intentional and it was released today, I think people would still say, yep, this is a new Metroid game. Metroid Zero Mission is a retelling of the original Metroid game, and my god does it do a good job. All of the modern bells and whistles that you would expect, and so many more, are here making it a fully-fledged modern experience, even today. Metroid Fusion, on the other hand, is the latest game in the series chronology, and it is so so good. The inclusion of the fusion suit allows so many new and interesting gameplay mechanics without moving away from what makes Metroid Metroid. Some people have accused it of being a little bit too short, but personally I was absolutely chuffed with the length of this game. It just maybe wasn't quite as long as Super Metroid. Neither of these games miss a single beat. They are just outstanding, superb, wonderful games that again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, they haven't aged a day. If you're unlucky enough to have never played either of these, then I absolutely order you to change that. These are the best games on the GBA. And there you have it. Yes, we've broken some rules, but we've had fun along the way, and I hope you've enjoyed it as well. What do you think? Do you agree with this list at all, or do you think it's total and utter arse? Let us know down there in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you tickle that subscribe button 26 times, unless you haven't subscribed, in which case do it an odd number of times. What? And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,